There is a particular beauty to the orderly arrangement of crops in the heartland. Rows of corn, open expanses of wheat, or a green carpet of soybeans spreading out to the horizon. It's an agricultural canvas heavily dependent on sunshine, moisture, and good weather. But questions about climate change go well beyond weather's seasonal challenges to agricultural production. A wide range of scientific studies show that increasing levels of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are increasing temperatures around the world. Weather is something that farmers deal with on a daily basis, but when we look at the long-term trends of what the impacts of climate are, um, we really need to be mindful of what we can do to mitigate and to make sure that we're equipped to adapt to climate change. Mitigating the effects of climate change is a priority for California. Studies in the Golden State point to temperature increases of nearly 3% by 2050, and perhaps double that by the end of the century. Thinking about changes in temperatures, uh, nighttime temperatures, and what does that mean for our well-known, world-renowned wine grape and wine industry? Thinking about chill hours, you know, what's happening in the wintertime that's really impacting the productivity and the quality of our fresh tree fruit and our citrus. California and many other states see rising temperatures affecting more than just chill hours. Higher temperatures could mean more droughts, a greater risk of wildfires, even impact water supplies for hydroelectric power. And California sees a negative effect on public health and food security. Climate change brings a lot of risks to this food security component. Uh, for example, we know that with the increased CO2 levels, you're getting increased temperatures, and when you have increased temperatures, that puts stresses on our crop production. If you look at animal agriculture, you get stresses on the animals, which leads to reduction in things like milk production. All of this is critical to the country's number one dairy state, and a region that provides a third of the nation's vegetables and much of the country's fresh fruits and tree nuts. But climate change will also impact the wide open expanses of corn, soybean, and wheat fields in the Midwest and Plains estates, crops critical to both human and animal food supplies. In these test plots at the University of Illinois, researchers mimic the growing conditions that crops will face in the future. Pipes spray increased levels of carbon dioxide and ozone into the fields. One result? a reduction in the nutritional quality of some grains. That's significant because there are about two billion people in the world who depend almost entirely on cereals and grains as their sources of zinc and iron. But for that fraction of the population, it could be significant. Wheat, it's more of an issue because in addition to reductions in zinc and iron, you also have a reduction in protein content. Researchers here and elsewhere want to examine how farmers might change production techniques to meet the challenge and what the agriculture industry can do to make crops more resilient to these changing conditions. Crops aside, a United Nations science panel says rising temperatures will also impact food sources from rivers, lakes, and oceans. A group called the Island Institute has been working with fishermen to examine conditions in Maine. Along the coast of Maine, the communities here are really concerned about the effects that climate change is having, particularly in those communities that are really dependent on fisheries. We need to be looking at managing at scales that respect the way that the ecosystem functions and how we describe to others the impact that these changes are having on all of us. This is a time when people are rolling up their sleeves and trying to sort out what the future looks like for them, and they're going to continue to work hard to get the best information that they can. Changing water conditions may be responsible for an increase in lobster numbers off the coast of Maine. That's good news, but increasing water temperatures have been cited as part of the reason for a decline in the lobster population in Long Island Sound to the south. And there's another seafood concern. Fisheries off the coasts of Washington State and Alaska are looking at ocean acidification. Increasing carbon dioxide absorbed by the ocean is one of several elements changing the chemistry of seawater. 
That change affects the ability of shellfish, lobsters, snow crabs, and others to form shells and skeletons. As ocean acidification or environmental changes impact the fisheries, I think we need to be hypersensitive. And I see a lot of autopilot on fishery management where I think we need to spend more money on fishery management to be ahead of the curve versus behind the curve. The question is, what do we expect to see in Alaska and with all of our fisheries? I would say that the response from the fishermen has been one of concern. I think they're aware that it's out there. They're aware that it could negatively impact their fisheries. Um, but there's so much unknown still that a lot of folks have put their opinions, I think, to the side, waiting to see what we have to show them. Climate change will require new resources and adaptations to handle an expected population growth of more than 2 billion people by 2050. Many have already begun looking ahead, recognizing the need to make critical changes incrementally. You need to always be looking at long term. Um, there's no doubt about that because that's also how we've learned from the past. But I think it's especially important that we're constantly looking 10, 20, 50 years out. It needs time, it needs cycles, it needs seasons um, to really come up with the best solutions for us.